Today we will compare two tools that are commonly used to calculate recombination in dope emitters in crystalline silicon solar cells. On the left here we have Aetna 2 published by PV Lighthouse and freely available on www.pvlighthouse.com.au. On the right hand side here I show a Gridler interface to CMD-PC1D-6.2 which is a derivative of the famous PC1D 5.9 whose latest version was developed at IFE Norway. The two tools have similar features. They can both import or define dopant profiles. They both calculate the emitter sheet resistance at equilibrium, the emitter saturation current density, which is a measure of recombination in the emitter, and they both evaluate the IQE, the quantum efficiency or the ability for these emitters to convert absorbed light into short circuit current. Now, the modeling behind these two tools are slightly different. They both use Fermi-Dirac statistics in the calculation of carrier concentrations. However, Aetna 2 assumes that the entire emitter region is quasi-neutral, whereas CMPC1D-6.2 does evaluate the electrostatic potential in the entire layer of the emitter, just as PC1D 5.9 did before. Whether or not in practice this leads to any difference in the outputs is, I guess, one of the topics of this video. So first thing first, I just want to get you very quickly familiarized with the procedures of using both of these tools. So let's do Aetna 2 first. Now this is a web-based tool, so if you're on Google, look for PV Lighthouse. We go to calculators, and under cells devices, we have Aetna 2. Whereas to access PC1D, I will show you today how to do it from the Gridler 2.5 Pro interface. So we're gonna launch Gridler. Here, we're using the version 2.50021 released on May 25th, 2018. It is important that you constantly update your version of Gridler. And recently we have gone through some refinements in the emitter calculation procedure. So please ensure that you have version 2.50021 or later. Okay, so back to the process of running emitter simulations. We're just gonna load an example cell. And then from here, we go to cell cross-section. And next to the emitter, we hit Calc. And that brings up this dope layer window. And this is our interface to PC1D. On Aetna 2, if we want to import our own doping profiles, we can go to Upload Profile, Choose File. And here we already have an example FOSS profile. So this is a Phosphorus profile. In the calculator page, it's important to choose that the profile is uploaded and set the dopant species in the background to boron. Concentration we're going to set at 8E15. I'm going to leave the recombination models at the default state. After that, we must define other parameters related to this emitter. SN0 and SP0 denotes the surface recombination velocities at the interface between the passivation and the emitter. So for this example, we're just going to set it at an arbitrary predefined value that we have chosen. And then the major outputs are just updated on the fly. So here we see that this emitter sheet resistance is 66.7 ohms per square. The saturation current density is 52.8 femtoamps per centimeter square. And the IQE is 86.9. On this last number, if we go to generation inputs, we can see that the IQE has been defined at a wavelength of 300 nanometer, which means 86.9% of 300 nanometer light, which has been absorbed in the emitter, uh, can be collected. Now, let us go through the same exercise on the right in the PC1D caller of Griller. So here we are also going to upload profile, the same example FOSS profile. We're going to set constant background concentration of the boron to also 8015. Also, it is important to go back to the cell diagram and go to the base and make sure that in the base, we also have p-type doping with the same base doping. So we update that. 
you'll notice that in the PC1D interface, we have this box called use ionization factor at 25 degree. And what that means is, although here we have imported the net active donor concentration, meaning the substitutional phosphorus atoms concentration, not every phosphorus atom is ionized. Here we're going to account for this by choosing phosphorus. So that Gridler will make use of a table of the fraction of ionized phosphorus atoms versus concentration that was published in 2006 by Pietro Altermat. So in fact, this ionization factor is also used in Aetna 2. It's just implied rather than explicitly chosen. Next, we're going to uncheck the box surfaces textured so as to calculate recombination parameters of the emitter if the wafer were planar. And then we're going to use the same surface recombination velocity number that's used over at the Aetna window. We're also going to use the same bulk lifetime, which is 100 microseconds. So now we have all the terms of the inputs being the same in both Aetna 2 and the PC1D caller of Gridler. So now we can hit this button PC1D for J0E and IQE. Wait one moment. And we produce numbers that are fairly consistent with Aetna. Sheet resistance is 65.6. Saturation current density is 52.5, which is pretty close. The IQE in the Gridler interface is plotted rather than given as number. But if we read out the number, it is 86.9, which is identical to the output of Aetna. Of course, we can try other phosphorus profiles and insert other SRVs. So for this video, what I have here is uh, 45 different phosphorus profiles. And what I'm going to do in Gridler is I'm going to simulate each of these phosphorus diffusion profiles, each with two SRVs, one which is zero and one which is set at a value that's parameterized against the surface concentration of that phosphorus profile. So in Gridler, it is possible to do all this in batch mode. Already have a script that does this job. So I know I need to do is select it and off away it goes. So Gridler has just finished parsing all the different phosphorus profiles and the results are here where for each case ran we have outputted for that profile an SRV, the ship resistance, the SRV that is used to do the simulation, the calculated emitter J0, as well as the IQE evaluated at different wavelengths 300, 350, 400, and 450. Now for some of these cases I have also manually gone to Aetna to do the calculations. Here's the comparison. This is a comparison of the sheet resistances. I will always plot on the x-axis the results generated by Gridler, all the Gridler caller to PC1D, and on the y-axis the results of Aetna 2. So here we can see that the agreement in sheet resistance is very good, and the average fractional deviation between the two calculations is less than a percent, is well less than a percent. This is a comparison of the emitter J0Es, the saturation current density that, that are calculated, so again here the agreement is good and the average fractional deviation is a little less than 3%. For the IQE evaluator at 300 nanometers, both of course predicts the same trend. There is general agreement, although larger deviations can be seen. IQE at 350 is pretty much the same as IQE at 300, so the graphs are similar. IQE at 400 nanometer, uh, there is more deviation, and then IQE at 450, there is even larger deviation. So generally, it does seem that Aetna 2, for the case of phosphorus emitters, calculate IQE at 450 and 400 nanometers that are lower than the, the results obtained by PC1D. However, both, of course, trend the same way. So one can expect some slight differences in the short circuit current density, which is calculated based on the IQEs of Aetna 2 or in the Gridler PC1D interface. 
We also repeated the same exercise for 16 boron profiles, some of which were both simulated by Aetna and Gridler PC1D. Here's the comparison of sheet resistance. Again, the agreement is excellent, well under 1% fractional deviation between the two sets. For the emitter J0E, agreement is good. There is some slightly higher numbers reported by Aetna, but generally the agreement is good to within 7% on average. IQE agreement is very good for boron at 300 nanometer. The deviation is very small. Same thing for 350 nanometer. And even at 400 nanometer and 450, the agreement between the two simulators is doing better than phosphorus emitter profiles. So, I hope this video gives you confidence in using either Aetna 2 or Gridler PC1D caller or the standalone version of PC1D 6.2 interchangeably for the purpose of calculating recombination in phosphorus or boron emitters. Comparisons between the two simulators for a variety of phosphorus and boron emitter profiles have proven that the two yield results are in good agreement. And also in 2014, the inventors of CMD PC1D6 have published a paper where they have also compared many generated boron and phosphorus Gaussian-shaped profiles of various sheet resistances. And they have also concluded that the two simulators generally produce very similar results. And that in turn, their results are also similar to those of Centaurus TCAT, which is considered state-of-the-art. Then of course in Gridler, once you have simulated the dope layer sheet resistance J0E and IQE, there is a natural workflow in Gridler where these results are automatically incorporated in the calculation of short circuit current density, and the calculated results are automatically input to the relevant boxes in the main simulation screen, so that all the parameters can come together really quickly and easily for the simulation of the overall device characteristics. 